Hello, everybody. So this is your next lecture um, for Auto 751. This lecture deals with gas analysis and exhaust uh, emission systems. Let's get right to this. So let's go here to our presentation. And okay, let's actually go back a few slides here. Let's look at the objectives. The, object, the objectives of this course are to discuss emission standards, identify the reasons why excessive amounts of hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and NOx uh, are created, diagnose drivability emission problems resulting from these, and then describe how to test for, for various emissions products. Uh, the other is um, we're going to talk about how the standards are based upon um, restrictions put on by the Environmental Protection Agency and um, how California has some of the most strict um, air policies in, in the world, actually. Okay. Looking at this label here, we noticed that this, this vehicle is an ultralight emissions vehicle, okay, and it's a 3.3. Now, keep in mind, it's a 3.3 and it's an ultra light emissions vehicle. So that, that's, a, that's a, a six cylinder V configuration. Uh, let's look at the, let's look at the uh, emission components though. It looks like it has a sequential fuel injection. It has two air fuel sensors. It has two warm up three way converters. It has two heated oxygen sensors. And then it has a three way converter, okay? And it's a 3.3 liter. Hmm. That's a whole lot of uh, information there, okay? So keep in mind, two air fuel sensors, two heated oxygen sensors, okay? Three-way converters. So let's kind of think about what's going on here. How, do, how is this thing looking? Well, let's go, let's do this. Let's, uh, let me bring out my whiteboard like so, okay? And let's kind of draw that out, okay? So it talks about it has two warm-up cattle converters. So if we got a... If we got a, um, if we have a, a V configuration, then that would mean that we have, we'd have one side like so to the, uh, of the exhaust, okay? And another side of the exhaust. So these are, these are supposed to be exhaust manifolds, okay? Like so. And then we have what they said is a warm up cat. So that, all that is is a smaller catalytic converter, okay? So we'll have, I mean, these are supposed to be your warm up catalytic converters, okay? like that, uh, it says warm up catalytic converter. And then it has a, um, so it has two of those. It has, it also has um, two air fuel sensors. So the air fuel sensors, and we'll draw the air fuel sensors here. So the air fuel sensors are here, okay? Each of these reporting back to the PCM, okay? To the PCM. the PCM, okay? And then it has, uh, it, it says it has two um, heated oxygen sensors. So then it has two oxygen sensors. So the oxygen sensors would be here after the cat, okay? So this would be your, your um, and it there, it's, yeah, it's heated. So, so it has H, O two S twice H O two S. Okay, those also report to the um, those also report to the PCM, and then it's going to have then it's going to go back to it's going to come back down like so because it's it says it has after that it has a three way converter just one so then that means that it goes back like so. Okay, and it goes back into one pipe, then it goes into a into a three-way converter. Okay, same as these, except that these are smaller warm-up catalytic converters. These here, and then this is a um, this one here is a three-way converter. Okay, so um, the the two um, warm-up converters, okay, and it, it, they, they're, they're designated just like this, and it's a warm-up three-way converter, okay, two of them here and here, and then it has, again, the three-way converter here, and then it's got one, two, three, four ways of looking at the exhaust gas oxygen, okay, 
two air fuel sensors and two heated oxygen sensors. So no wonder it's an ultralight emissions vehicle. It has all that uh, equipment on it, okay? Let me go ahead and uh, clear the drawings. Um, stop the share, share screen again, and then go back to our presentation. Okay. All right, and so that's where we're at there, okay? So that's that's what that means, okay? And again, this 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 vehicle, it's a, applicable to California regulations, so it makes it a California vehicle, even though it's US and it's US and Canada certified and OBD2 certified, okay? It is a uh, technically a California vehicle, okay? California, oops, California vehicle. So this is just a diagram of the tests that we that that are done to test the um, emission systems. This was the original uh, test called the uh, INM or Inspection Maintenance 240 test, which basically lasted 240 seconds. That's why they called it that. And here is the speed miles per hour, and then here is is the time, right? Speed and time. That's the way you measure. Um, that's the way you measure this. Notice that what happens is that you accelerate and the vehicle goes up to um, about 20 miles per hour, okay? Then it accelerates again, goes, uh, goes to about 30 miles per hour, okay? Decelerates, okay, at about 90 seconds, and then goes back up again to about 50 miles per hour, right, for the duration of the test, okay? Which is uh, uh, an easily another 120 seconds, okay? So this is very close to what we do this is close to, very close to what we do uh, in California, okay? In California, we do um, the uh, ASM test, which I'll describe in a second, but this is also very close. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, so talking about regulations, this is the Clean Air Act uh, requires that the, uh, that the worst areas of the country um, have some kind of plan, right? What kind of plan do they have? Well, California was the first to implement a smog check program and and for the most part, they've done fairly well. Uh, we've done fairly well. Um, remember that this course allows you to, uh, to become a smog tech if you pursue it, okay? And um, we have different types of testing. We have um, computerized emissions analyzers to test. We have visual inspections. Um, keep in mind that there's a waiver in case that, um, in case that, the, that the consumer cannot afford it, right? they can prove that they cannot afford it. They can actually get a waiver, a one-time waiver to, uh, to not have to do their smog check as long as, as the vehicle has not been tampered or anything, okay? Uh, what type, the, the type of testing is uh, we do some remote on the road testing. Um, vehicles that do not pass get the, their registration denied. Um, so there's also a denial of waiver for vehicles that are under warranty or that, or that have been tampered with. It says annual inspections, but our inspections are actually biannual, right? Or, or every, every two years. And then for vehicles that are 96 and newer, we actually do OBD2 system checks. Okay. This is an example of the way we test our vehicles in California. This is a uh, ASM test, right? So on the ASM test, slightly different than what they, than what they described, um, than they, what they, they described in the table, the ASM test which ASM, by the way, stands for um, Acceleration Simulation Mode, Acceleration Simulation Mode. And for this test, we put the vehicle on a dynamometer, okay? And um, the reason for the dynamometer is uh, so that it could measure oxides of nitrogen as well. And we'll, I'll talk about how that works in just a second. But typically what happens here is that we'll run the vehicle at about 15 miles per hour, Okay, at, at 50 miles per hour, plus or minus uh, one mile per hour. And we'll run that for about 90 seconds, okay? And then we accelerate up to, um, we accelerate up to 25 miles per hour, okay? And so the way that this works is that we, uh, we put different load values on this, on this roller so that it can create a load on the vehicle, okay? And that's important because the only way to measure NOx, okay, we measure three gases, right? We measure three gases. We measure carbon monoxide. Well, we measure five, but the, but the three that can make the vehicle fail are carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and oxides of nitrogen. Okay. This is a smog um, information uh, index. 
and this is on a hybrid vehicle. Notice that the this hybrid vehicle it um, it produces less than 0.2 of the amount of of smog. It's actually at 0 0.09. Okay, the average vehicle it says is 0.58. Okay, so this is well below the threshold. Okay, it does not talk about though carbon dioxide, which can can produce global warming. So let's look at some of the gases and how they're produced. This is a gas analysis emission table. And the first gas we're going to talk about is carbon monoxide. Remember the carbon monoxide is a toxic, colorless, odorless. It's a very deadly gas. You'll never, you'll never realize that, that, that it's uh, going into your lungs. And the next thing you know, you're, well, you won't know it, but you'll die, OK? Uh, CO, is, CO is a result of incomplete combustion. We should know that by now. Uh, there's always some CO in, in the exhaust. Now, let's look at this table. So this bottom line here is CO, OK? This bottom line, even though we're showing HC here as well, the one we're looking at right now is CO, carbon monoxide. Notice that the stoichiometric, OK? Remember, stoichiometric is the ideal air fuel ratio, which is 14.7 to 1. Uh, it sits right in here. And notice a carbon monoxide is very low, OK, at this ideal ratio. Notice also that the only thing that, the only situation that causes this gas to rise is as the mixture gets richer, OK? We talked about how, how a rich condition will always affect carbon monoxide, OK? Always affect carbon monoxide. Notice that as, it, as the mixture goes leaner, then carbon monoxide drops down and it stays low. Okay, so remember that this is the easy gas to remember, um, carbon monoxide, as long as we're going on, on the rich side, it'll always increase, okay? So that's that for carbon monoxide. The next one is hydrocarbon, okay? So it says hydrocarbons are formed when, when carbon combines with hydrogen, uh, when mixed with oxygen and ignited, HC burns to produce heat. So basically hydrocarbons are unburned fuel, okay? And if we look at this chart, notice that hydrocarbons are never quite that low, okay? They're, they're not as low as CO, carbon monoxide, okay? And we notice that we can, we can raise hydrocarbons by either situation, either by going on a, uh, on a lean condition, okay? Or a rich condition. Either one is going to uh, increase hydrocarbons, okay? Um, all, remember that the most common cause of hydrocarbons, although, is a uh, misfire, okay? Moving on to um, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of nitrogen. So uh, oxides of nitrogen is, is caused when um, molecules of nitrogen and oxygen mix. Remember that the air naturally has nitrogen in it. It's actually 78% nitrogen. And when that nitrogen mixes with the oxygen, okay, and binds with that oxygen under extreme heat, okay, under extreme heat, then what happens is that the uh, molecules bind and they form oxides of nitrogen or NOx, okay? So notice that NOx, even, even at the stoichiometric value, is still relatively high, okay? It's still relatively high, but as we go a little on the lean side, notice how much higher it gets, okay? Notice how much higher it gets. So, and, but NOx will always drop down with a rich condition, okay? With a rich condition, NOx will always drop down. So this is, this is as best as we're gonna do right here at 14.7 to one. We're gonna try to keep oxides of nitrogen slightly low, low enough where the catalytic converter can manage it, okay? This is, this is, the, this is key right here, okay? because a calorie converter can still manage oxides of nitrogen. As it, as it rises up higher than this, then what, it, what happens is that the calorie converter can no longer manage it and it, ha and it escapes to the atmosphere, okay? Oxygen chart, okay? Oxygen, as you notice, oxygen is relatively high during uh, normal combustion or during the stoichiometric value, but that's okay because it's oxygen, right? It doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, here we are. Oxygen. Okay. So oxygen comes up. 
Okay, oxygen comes up during this time, during the lean condition. And as you notice, it comes up relatively the same as, hydro, as hydrocarbons. So if you notice here, what ends up happening is that hydro, um, I'm sorry, oxygen will rise on the lean side, okay, will rise on the lean side. And like I said before, um, we use this to indicate what kind of, uh, how, or how lean the condition is. We call oxygen the lean indicator, okay? We call oxygen the lean indicator. Let me uh, do this again and remind you how this is gonna work. Okay, so remember that in this example, remember we have the three gases, we have uh, hydrocarbons, excuse me. Okay, we have hydrocarbons, we have carbon monoxide, and then we have NOx, okay? But then we have two other gases that, are, that, that, that will not fail the vehicle, but we use for diagnosis, and that's carbon dioxide, and we have um, oxygen, okay? So I talked about before how hydrocarbons can be, can be created by misfires, and I remember, I, I, and Hopefully you remember what the three types of misfires were. I'm not gonna go back over it today because you should know that already. So hydrocarbons are, are, are the most common cause are misfires, okay? But then hydrocarbons can also be, uh, can also be the result of a rich condition. Okay, can also be the result of a rich condition. And the question I asked you was, how do we know? How do we know if it's a if it's hydrocarbon caused by a misfire or higher hydrocarbon caused by a rich? How do we know? Well, the way we know is that we look at the oxygen. Okay, we look at the oxygen. If we have a hydrocarbon failure with oxygen, then we know it's a result of one of the three types of misfires. If we have hydrocarbons with carbon monoxide, then it's a result of a rich condition, okay? Simple as that. Please remember that, okay? Let me uh, go like this and go back to our presentation. Okay, so moving on. And please don't tell me this thing pulls up again. Okay, so our carbon dioxide chart. Okay, carbon dioxide. So this is the this is the carbon dioxide chart. Notice that it is high. Carbon dioxide is high during our stoichiometric value. So we call carbon dioxide um, the best indicator of combustion efficiency. Okay, so when carbon dioxide is high, that means that our all our other gases are at a pretty decent level. Okay. All the other gases are at a decent level. So we look at carbon dioxide um, and we look to see that it is nice and high because as, it's, as it reads here, carbon dioxide is produced from the complete combustion of hydrocarbon fuel, okay? So basically carbon dioxide is an indicator of, of overall engine efficiency, okay? Remember that carbon dioxide is a, uh, is a indicator of overall engine efficiency. Moving on. Um, so here's our five gas combined. Okay, there's our five gases all together. Look at this chart, study it, it's in your book. Make sure you understand what's going on here. Not, not just a bunch of squiggly lines. It's actually the trace of the, our gases. It's a trace of carbon monoxide, the trace of hydrocarbons, the trace of oxides of nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide and how they react. You need to remember what happens with these as we go from uh, richer to leaner, okay? From richer to leaner. Um, let's move on a little bit. And remember that hydrocarbons will, will be high, both rich or lean. How do we find out? We look at the oxygen, okay? How do we, how do we find out whether it's a rich condition or lean condition? We look at the oxygen. Um, 
oxygen is only high when it's when it's when the mixture is lean. Okay, so that's that's a way to tell. Notice that hydrocarbons and oxygen fly together. Okay. The oxygen can also be high if we have a misfire. Okay, if we have a misfire, why is that? Well, that's because if we have a misfire, then nothing happens to the oxygen that was going through that cylinder. We don't use it, just like we don't use the hydrocarbons. Okay, so again, a misfire will have high hydrocarbons and high I, uh, and have high oxygen, okay, just like a, just like a um, lean air fuel mixture. CO is only high when rich, so that's an easy one to remember, okay. And here, uh, the example of a, the effects of a lean condition, okay. So the effects of a lean condition are that, um, Here's our perfect, or here's our air fuel ratio value. Look, notice that as we are, our mixture goes lean at about 16 to one, okay? Notice that carbon dioxide drops down. Carbon dioxide drops down as soon as we're out of the 14.7 to one range, right? Carbon dioxide drops down. And I'll give you the values in just a second as what, what's supposed to be normal, okay? And then notice that NOx uh, goes, goes significantly higher. Hydrocarbons kind of, uh, stays the same when lean, but notice how it starts to rise up over here, okay? It, stay, it, it stays relatively low until it gets over here to this misfire range, then hydrocarbons go back up again. Oxygen goes up uh, as soon as we start crossing into the lean side, and then carbon monoxide drops immediately on the, on, as we go leaner, okay? Again, please study this chart and the effects. Now, we're looking at the rich side. So if we go on the rich side of the stoichiometric value, carbon dioxide again drops down. Remember, carbon dioxide drops down unless it's a ideal mixture. Notice that hydrocarbons goes back, goes up. Hydrocarbons goes up on both situations. NOx goes down, okay, NOx goes down. Um, carbon monoxide, of course, shoots straight up and then oxygen goes down on a rich condition. Let me warn you, any time that you have a, an excessively rich condition, let's say a vehicle comes into your shop and it fails for carbon monoxide um, um, readings, right? The carbon monoxide is too high. When you, you need to warn your customer that once you fix the carbon monoxide issue, you might have a NOx issue, okay? Because you can't see the NOx issue when you have an excessively rich condition. And it's very common, it's very common that when you fix the high, I'm sorry, when you fix the carbon monoxide issue, that now you're gonna be left with a high NOx issue, okay? Because that high carbon monoxide or that rich condition was, was masking the high NOx, okay? So be aware of that. All right, let's take a, or I'm gonna take a quick break before we look at this next chart, it's in your book. Why don't you, uh, Take a quick um, minute and gather yourself. We'll come back and finish this lecture. We should be able to finish it, finish it with one swoop. Okay, so I'll see you in just a few minutes. <laughs>